All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who've seen the last video, you've seen that me and Chad, we went out after a rough day. We were able to harvest a white-tailed deer. Um, I wanted to do a catch, clean, and cook, but the day didn't go as planned. And about the time we had caught the deer, you know, it was late. Um, I had to be up early for work the next morning. So this is part two of that video. Um, so what I did, I just took some back strap, right? Cut it up real good and I have it marinating. All right, the marinade just basically consists of uh, Worcestershire sauce, liquid smoke, soy sauce, and some black pepper, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and set my heat to medium, which is already done, cast iron skillet as you see, all right? And there are so many different ways that you can cook backstrap. And in the future, I'm gonna do more recipes. But tonight, I'm gonna do a simple one, okay? So I'm gonna put some butter in the skillet and let that melt down real good. And that's right, folks, I use an entire stick. Butter really helps flavor uh, the meat. And it's actually melting pretty good, so I'll let that melt down. If you look here on my plate here, I have some chopped up yellow onion. I have some chopped up garlic, all right? I have ground sage and ground thyme. And that's all you need. You see, I didn't really put too much sage and thyme because I didn't want the flavor to overtake the flavor of the venison. Um, and like I stated with the marinade that I have in it as well, all those flavors come together and just be amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this butter melt down real good where I want it. And we'll go ahead and get cooking. Make sure, you know, when you trim your back strap, get all the silver skin off. Uh, me personally, whenever I eat any type of wild game, I always soak it the night before for 24 hours. So I soak it in just water, a little bit of lemon juice, and a little bit of salt, just to help draw the blood out of it. Now I know most I know most of you guys really don't do that, and you don't have to do it, it's just my personal preference, because I'm not big on the wild game taste. Um, but either way, it still tastes amazing. All right. So now that your butter's getting where you want it, it's pretty much melted down. The butter's smelling amazing already. I'll go ahead and add everything off the plate. And just pretty much put everything in one wok. Get the onions, got your garlic. Right. Sage in your tongue. All right, now that you got everything in, go ahead and give it a quick stir. And like I said, keep your heat on medium. Right, you don't want to cook it too fast because you don't want to overcook it. All right, so I'm stirring this up, I'm letting all that flavor just intertwine with that butter, and I can already smell it, and it smells amazing. As I stated, there's so many different ways you can do your venison, especially the back strap, which is my favorite part of the deer. Um, but this is just one of those ways, all right? I'm also interested in hearing, you know, uh, your recipes. Share with me in the description down below, in the comments down below, rather, and tell me how you prepare your venison. Uh, 
if I see a recipe that I think I would like, I will actually try it here on the channel and I will even give you a shout out. So go ahead and let me know how you guys do your venison. Now that I got my butter rolling like I want it to, I'm gonna start adding some of the back strap into it. And you can smell those flavors really coming coming together. It smells so good. I'm excited. Let's see if I can get one more piece in there. So now that it's done cooked, I gave it about seven minutes on one side. Like I said, at a medium heat, you can kind of see it, the pink coming through on one side. So that always tells me it's time to give her a flip. All right, so I'm gonna go flip these over. And like I said, man, it smells so, so good. I just let that butter, that onion, that garlic, that thyme, and the sage, along with the other marinade, just all come together and do its thing. And you guys should actually try this at home. I know I say that about everything that I I cook, but you can't knock it until you try it. Let that go a little longer. And then I will see you guys at the table. Alright, now here you have it. Some of that back strap put up, marinated, cooked up. And here I have two of my sons. I have Cassidy and I have Emery. Alright, now this is their first time trying deer. So I'm um, very. It's not your first time? You remember you got it. You were. Oh, how did a long time ago find that one person and then we ate it? Yeah, you had jerky, okay, I'm sorry. He's not had he's not had jerky before. So uh <clears throat> without further ado, I'll let you guys go ahead and try a piece. Grab a piece, any piece. Grab a piece, any piece. And I'm gonna grab a piece as well. And I think it's very important, you know, to share this type of things with your kids, to teach them that you know, you can go out right off the land and harvest food and make a meal out of it. Mm. He's showering down. Trust me. This guy here, he's a picky eater. If he don't like it, you're gonna know. Now, if I just gave this to you guys and didn't tell you it was deer, would you be able to tell? Doesn't taste gamey or nothing, does it? And I served the bushel. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put some cauliflower with this to make an actual meal so that my kids are getting all their nutrition that they need. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't, please consider subscribing to the channel. We have more videos coming. And uh, love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. We out.